Hi, I'm Andreas Prince. Hi there, I'm Maya Findlay. I'm Irene Pollock. I'm Matt Rowan. I'm Cheryl Zinnick. Hi there, I'm Robert. Robert Ray. Hi, I'm Nicholas Hurd. Let's get started. Can you talk about the early days of Rice Ronald Salt Press? Well, Sauce Press started back in 2007. My first interview with Cheryl was back in November 13th, 2007. It was a Tuesday. And once we met the first time, once we met, we clicked. We had a great time. We started to work together and it turned out for the best. And we started to create the name for the program. We did some exploration. We came up with, with, with so many names. And Janet. then we came up with Soul Express, but that came from, that came from all of us because it makes sense to the program's name. And then it took off from there. Can you tell us about the seeds that formed Soul Express? Actually, about five years ago, I interviewed um, Cheryl and Janet talking about Soul Express and its beginnings on my talk show called Keeping It Real with Nick, which is now with the Disability Channel. And, and Janet said, in the interview that art is my life. And so that's how the program actually, how it started, that art is her life. And then during that interview, there was a video that was taken back in October uh, 2007 before the program started called I Am. Yeah. That I hate, I, I, I love, I hate, I drain. And Janet turned that into a movement piece in, in, her, in her creative way with um, someone who helped her with, to contribute to that movement piece. And that's how the theater group started. And that, and then the following year was when the creative arts group started. Mm -hmm. So that turned out, and, and plus we're still doing this creative program today. Yeah. And now we're doing on Zoom on our new platform. And yeah. we're still doing that. Janet and I were in a performance together many, many uh, years ago. And there was kind of this thought that you know, maybe people with uh, intellectual disabilities that maybe they can't act, but that was kind of the thinking that they, they always break the fourth wall. And I, I saw people really desiring to act and to perform and to create. And so Janet was a really strong force in that. And that was also something I wanted to do. So there was something that we had a shared interest. And at that time, the community found a new space and they wanted to share this space and to do something more of outreach. So all three kind of came together, Janet's desires, my desires, the community's desires, and, and to make space for creativity and make space for people's unique voice. Yeah. Can you tell us about the growth of Soul Express? I mean, it started one day a week in, in the beginning, and then we went from one day a week to two days a week, then three days a week, four days a week, and five days a week, around from the previous years. And now, and now we, we still do five days a week. And that is still, and that is, and that is still going on today. Yeah. Sure, do you, do you want like to um, share anything? Yeah, no, you, you really covered a lot, which is great. And it's just brought back a lot of memories, wonderful memories. 
and um, you know, it started uh, with Janet, and the idea was was that right off the bat, we would meet with professional artists to train, to learn really the skills of art so that when we're on stage, we could really perform together. And so our first performance, well, we did, we went to um, Red Pepper Theater just to learn about yep. um, how to create masks and we made our own masks. Yep. And then we, our first performance was called uh, Composition where each person spoke about themselves and their interests and who they were and um, that was, we made sure it was at a real theater and that we invited people and that it was a shared performance. So uh, right off the bat, it started as, as something that uh, valuing people who really see themselves as artists, that they see that art is part of who they are and their life. So it's an arts program that really uh, uh, makes space for artists to grow. and and also to learn. And so when we learn those skills, then we can express more. So, uh, and we did talk a lot about expressing ourselves. So yeah. some of them, um, so we often did research, uh, we learned from other professionals, we explored, and then we share what we, what we have explored or share what we want to say. Andreas, do you think you could talk about your experience with birds make me think about freedom? I think it was um, comfortable, like it's like it's going for that deep dark space of of not knowing what's going to happen. If it's about ammonia, I can feel the darkness. We are like the birds are going through darkness, going out into the light. It was a great experience because I got to use to people really make good friends out of this. Play. the 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 person I think about freedom. Was there any parts from the play that stayed with you? Uh, in in the bear winter, to spot it, to he finds hope in a red berry. Uh, hope is what you have in the world. Like I hope this this virus will go away. I hope this great things will stop, but we need to celebrate the hope that we have for people to be free from institutions. Can you share about the development of the play? Yeah, so I joined Birds Make Me Think About Freedom in 2018, um, when the group started to prepare to present the show at Fringe. And so I joined the project as stage manager and it was a really amazing experience, a project that I felt was really important and I'm really happy that I was able to join on. Um, I had learned a bit about institutions, but it was um, really great to see that the group had approached it from the side of the survivors' stories and um, Kind of honoring and recognizing those people. Well, Pat and Marie came. They were survivors from the institution. We talk. We listened to them talk at, in a circle, and we uh, they said they wanted to be free. They didn't like being cooped up in there so they had some hard times in the institution yeah and then we had um jim and marilyn domage as well and they showed us a, a video where did the stories that informed the show come from in the birds we we touched on stories uh stories from survivors stories from siblings of survivors um, yes. stories, and then also thoughts and responses from people who weren't in the institution but also have been affected by what yes. happened by the attitude so like i don't know do you remember what you had said at the very beginning of the play about yes i do i have time to say about that that i'm a compassion builder and i want to give myself to these stories and 
to learn from these stories, to think about what they and think about what they went through, gone through. I can't imagine me being there because mm-hmm. I could have been there too. Yeah, I wouldn't have any power at all, but we do. Right. And that's also a very powerful message yeah. Yeah. to not just to me, but also to the survivors. Yeah, that's so true, Nick. Uh, a different question. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how the group decided what to include. Yeah, I'd love to talk about uh, two people who were named as survivor guides. And these were two people who both wanted to remain anonymous. Um, and who were uh, lived in Larsh for many years, uh, many, many years. And during that time, were able to talk about their experience, were able to uh, move through certain healing and um, continue to be affected by their experience, but are able to talk about it and talk about um, what they uh, have learned. One of the survivors said, I didn't choose what happened to me, but I can choose what I do with my life. And these two people, uh, Victoria and I met with quite often along the way. And we said, this is what we're doing with our group. And this is what we looked at. And what are your feelings? And what do you think about freedom? And they really helped us to make sure that what we presented would be um, sensitive. So Nick, you remember where we we ta- we did the all of us created birds, right? So yeah. we, had, we had created a story, and there was this image of a of a oh. black building with with. I remember birds. something that we created a uh, it was in their projection. We had a black building that looked like an institution, and we had all these different kinds of birds flying out those birds flying out came from one of the survivors who had seen the building. Yes. And, uh, and, and um, when asked, you know, what would you do to change things? And he said, I put some birds in there uh, and, and have them fly out. And his image I just loved was a turtle bird because, the, because that bird would have a choice and choice was so important. And that bird could have a choice as, as whether to walk out or to fly out. And so um, they kept us honest and kept us sensitive. Yes, so the, it did, it go, went out very slowly. Yeah, keep us sensitive and um, listen to what we're doing, give us some feedback. And that really formed what we did. Thank you. Fast forward to now, we're all in a global pandemic. It's not all easy. How has it been adjusting to creating online? Yeah, that, that is certainly true. Every every time we try like the, um, like like a new, like a new thing, there certainly is, certainly is a little bit of a learning curve. Yeah, a lot of our our group has done really well, kind of adjusting. Maybe I have a question for you, Robert. Like now that everything's online, um, is there anything from that shift that's been good? I mean, I mean, like, 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 have, have an online you know, have people that come from the UK, you know, people that are connected from, from, from like BC. Do you want to talk about any current projects that you guys are working on? Our play this year is going to be in between Lost and Found online during the pandemic. So we've been doing rehearsals uh, Monday and Tuesday from three to four on Zoom. We've been working on it for a while now, so it'll be in the summer in July. Matt, what what do you hope will continue as the the pandemic's over? Um, uh, I guess I I hope, like I've seen flexibility people like recognizing how flexible we are and and creativity and i hope that that continues to grow um i mean for sure in terms of accessibility we have more you know more options in terms of live streaming and access to content whether to go in person or like if if it's helpful to stay home i can experience theater and different things from the comfort of my home and and i think that 
flexibility. I hope that that stays a part of um, the options that are available. Irene, you're with us all week. I wonder if you could uh, tell us uh, what you're involved in at Soul Express. Monday is text and technique. Tuesday is body movement and dance. Wednesday is visual art. Thursday is voice and singing. Friday is song and storytelling. I love every class. Have you enjoyed uh, Zoom and getting used to it? I enjoy Zoom. It's all with all my friends and I love singing, I love art. I love storytelling, I love all the classes. Thanks everyone for your time and for listening. Bye for now.